And it's only been about 76, 77 years since my grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, first set foot into the Marne River outside of Paris with this wacky contraption on his back, what he called the scaphandre autonome or the aqualung, to see if it was possible for humans to explore the ocean freely, to swim like a fish. Because prior to the late 1930s, no one had ever done that before. The ocean bug is, is something that I caught from a very early age and, and I haven't looked back. Growing up with my grandfather and all of his adventures and his travels around the world, filming and documenting the wonders of the ocean, inspired me from a young age. I never knew my father, Philippe Sr. He died six months before I was born, but through his career was a pivotal part of that, that early work in those documentaries and films, particularly towards the end of my grandfather's life. He realized that if we're going to create the kind of social, economic, and political change and make it durable and lasting, the only way to do that is to focus on youth and education and build a society and a constituency of people that understand and care about these issues. That really inspired me. So when I was in university, my sister Alexandra and I started an organization called Earth Echo International, focused on building a global youth strategy to restore and protect the ocean. We work with the UN and many organizations around the world. We've reached over two million young people in 146 countries. It's really about recognizing the power that young people have to change the world. There are five major issues facing the ocean today. Coastal eutrophication is when you get too many nutrients in the water from things like coastal runoff, from fertilizer, from food waste, uh, human waste. All of those things cause eutrophication. And so what ends up happening is you can have an abundance of algae and feeds on those nutrients, and then that can have a cascading impact on the local ecosystems, particularly causing things like dead zones. Overfishing is an epidemic that is driven by the tragedy of the commons. This idea that because everybody owns the ocean, nobody kind of owns the ocean, and therefore you get a situation where then nobody is there to enforce the rules. And so overfishing is a crisis that continues to impoverish the natural wealth of the ocean, but then also has very serious impacts for the livelihood of millions of people around the world. Plastic never biodegrades, but it photodegrades. So in sunlight and in seawater, plastic breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces, and we're starting to learn that microplastics and nanoplastics are pervasive in the environment, and they are having a huge impact on the health of not only nature and animals in nature, but also people. Ocean acidification is where literally the ocean, by absorbing so much carbon, is becoming more acidic. As the pH shifts, the ocean is more acidic than it's been for millions of years. What that does to ecosystems and the animals that live in these systems and rely on these stable levels of pH is devastating. We can't talk about climate change without talking about the ocean because the ocean drives our climate. Ocean warming is having two very serious impacts. One is rising sea levels, because as, as things warm, they expand. So the ocean is expanding. And rising sea levels is threatening coastal ecosystems around the world, threatening coastal cities and habitats and trillions of dollars of real estate and people's livelihoods and, and their homes. That's all happening predominantly because of warming oceans. Now, the other problem with warming oceans, of course, is that it's completely changing the thermodynamic system that drives ocean currents and thus drives our climate. Because as the ocean moves cold water from the poles down, warm water from the tropics up and down, that is how we have a relatively stable climate. We do because of the ocean. And as we think about the ocean, it is not only the greatest victim of the climate crisis, it's also our greatest ally. Not only do we have this terrible propensity to destroy things, humanity also has this amazing capacity to build and to renew and restore and to innovate. And so when I think about all the things that are happening there from coastal restoration, coastal development, I actually don't think about sustainability. I think about restoration and how we can regenerate the environment. And so we've been involved in projects, take coral reefs for example, technology that now exists for us to grow corals in captivity, in greenhouses essentially, and accelerate and industrialize active reef restoration at a scale that's never been done before. At the UN and other global bodies, the restorative blue economy is a tremendous opportunity to rebuild the resilience and health of these ecosystems and also provide jobs and opportunity and food for people as well. We don't want to gloss over the problems, but we also don't want to get so dragged down by the problems that we forget the opportunity, that, that there is hope. 
and that humanity has tremendous tools at our disposal to renew, rebuild, restore, and create a better future. It was my grandfather who opened the world's eyes to the wonders of the ocean. It's a legacy that I'm incredibly proud of. Thank you.